I found this looks like being a good match. These two guys have both played some pretty solid stuff over the last day and a half. Yeah, I'm just looking back at their results and um, obviously I played John myself in one of the early rounds um, this morning. Uh, he looked in good form. Aaron's results suggest that he's uh, also in good form, so he should be in for a really good final uh, semi-final. I feel like the tournament's opened right up because with the, f the top four seeds all lost in the first round yesterday, which is not really what you'd have expected. It's given a bit of hope, I guess, to those immediately below them in the rankings. Yeah, it was um, a day of shocks yesterday. Um, I think even like maybe six out of the top eight or six or seven out of the top eight got beat yesterday. Um, but it just shows you the um, you know the the standard uh, on the proto that. You can you can literally lose to anyone if you know if you if you're not quite the top of your game and maybe the balls are not really rolling your way off the breaks and yeah so can't take uh, anyone for granted you just have to hope that you get the chances and you you, you take them. Easy to say, obviously in hindsight, but you, you do always feel that the top guys. It's sort of at the beginning of the season. Everyone's talking about the rankings and. Yeah, they are there to be shot at. It's very hard to replicate when you've had a season like Tom or Stevie or indeed Chris Melling last season. It's kind of hard to come up with another one of those. Yeah, uh, I mean, all three players had you know unbelievable seasons last year, and um, obviously Phil Harrison's in the final, awaiting the winner, and you know he could be the one that maybe potentially repeats what what those three guys did last year because his, his recent form has been unbelievable, so, yeah. Yeah, it feels like he's really come into form, won the penultimate event of last season and the Players' Championship, so ended the season with two big titles. Yeah, and he's obviously uh, um, carried on from where he left off at the end of 2023, and... Um, Arguably, could be a slight favourite whoever he plays, and you know, from the winner of this match. But it's it's hard to say. I think when you get to a final, it's usually you know a toss of a coin because whoever's got got there will have been playing well. Um, that's gone a little bit wrong. Um, they were a little bit tricky those two reds. Um, I didn't really have a look whether they had a pocket, and he could have like place the cue ball you know to try and um, get on them without nudging into them uh, yeah it was a tough cannon played the way that he was trying to play it was always going to be hard to generate enough pace mm. I mean it doesn't achieve a lot that does it, it no sort of containing yeah. shot I suppose yeah I mean to be fair we can say it's a strange shot but I don't think he had much much choice no he? he didn't I mean the eight ball is close-ish to that red, which maybe makes the skill shot more difficult, but the fact that red is right over the pocket means that John wants to clear up and get down to it. You, you would expect him to be able to make it. Yeah, he wants to be uh, moving that red, or you know, playing a lot, uh, some kind of loss of turn shot pretty quick. He doesn't want to leave it too late. Uh, he doesn't have to go straight away. He could just nudge this over the the pocket, knowing that Aaron can't really play the loss of turn shot because the balls are blocking each other. So, uh, yeah, it's a pretty clever shot, really. He's definitely ahead in this frame. It's the highest ranked of the new pros at the end of last season. See a player that came in with a big CV before joining Ultimate Pool, so everyone was expecting big things of him. Looks like he's starting to live up to that. Yeah, John, everyone knows that John's been one of the best players in the world for a few years now, so no no real surprise to see that he was the top-ranked uh, new pro from last year, so expecting uh, a lot of good things from him this year, You know, building up uh, from his 2023 debut season on the Ultimate Pool circuit. And whoever you are and whatever pedigree you have, it does take a while to adjust to these conditions. I mean, he'll have played tough off position, so not just that, but the format of the matches, the shot clock, all of that kind of stuff. So obviously well experienced with that now. Yeah, he's uh, he's been playing a lot recently too. He's uh, played some tournaments in Scotland, and so he's, he's uh, going to be 
you know, match sharp. He's obviously got to the semi, so he's, you know, feeling good about his game. But um, when he played against me earlier on, his break was unbelievable. He's, he was just literally middle, middle in the cue ball. You know, I, I feel like, you know, when you when you're breaking as good as he was, you kind of deserve, you know, balls off the break, but also a nice layout. Um, yeah, so it was hard to like try and break his serve the way he was breaking. Probably why I mean I've not really seen Aaron play much this weekend, but if John can break like he did against me, then you know he'll fancy his chances to win this match and maybe even go all the way. Yeah, I mean this is certainly when you start thinking about winning it. When we start out with 75 pros on a Thursday afternoon, it, you're really just trying to win your first couple of matches, and everything else feels a bit distant. Well, oh, <laughs> how's that for a couple of <laughs> yeah. runs to go in? Yeah, he got he kind of got lucky then, unlu unbelievably unlucky then, because uh, he's yeah he's he's kind of lost the frame now after that one bit of bad luck. Yeah, this is going to be tough because anything short of potting the run out of the snooker isn't really going to work. But then even if he does pot that, it's not that likely to be nicely on the eight ball. Yeah, I think the black does go. So if he does fluke it, you know, it's actually a big back too. Well, obviously it's he hasn't. And that's the end of that, I think. I can't see John uh, not clearing these four yellows on the black up. Blinking quite hard there, wasn't he? Aaron <laughs> yeah. doesn't usually bl blink that much. Maybe sometimes I, I I do that just to make sure uh, my eyes are not getting dry, and you never know. Just hoping that when he looks back at the table, it's going to be a more difficult finish than that. <laughs> yeah, hoping that the balls all end up on the cushions or something. I need to slow down. Yeah, that's all right. It was nice for the first throw in the match just to get gifted a nice easy chance. Yeah. And it's going to be his break too, so hopefully he doesn't let me down and ends up uh, hitting a bad break. Let's see uh, if he's carried his break into his f matches after he beat me. Yeah, it's one of the ultimate frustrations of pool when somebody beats you by playing amazingly and then you watch them in the next match and <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. And he doesn't cream that again. So he has carried on his breaking form. And at first glance, the yellows look all right. I didn't see any clusters. No, he's hit that really well, hasn't he? To, yeah. to play with that much pace and get the key ball absolutely flush to the front ball. Yeah, I think that's what you would call an, a really nicely timed break. He didn't, he didn't over hit it. It was just more... Timing. Yeah, I think that is what all the good breaks share. It's tempting when you just look at them for the first time to think the guys are just smashing them hard, but actually it's way more about the timing. Yeah, I mean, even like that, that break there is probably more um, well known for someone like Jack. Jack, that's like Jack's break into what Jack John's done there, and every time. Jack speaks about his break. He, he says he's like hitting him at forty percent or something. You know, when you but when you see it, you're thinking that he's actually hitting him so hard. But it's all timing. Yeah, it's such a difficult thing to achieve. We were talking about Stevie Dempsey's break last night and noting how far he draws the cue back, and obviously that helps to get the acceleration. But it's also really hard to time it if you have that longer backswing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These have all sat down very nicely for him. Yeah, so he'll p probably clear these three reds uh, in the middle of the table and then leave uh, a nice angle on the one on the uh, bottom cushion uh, just to float the cue ball back up off the cushion. And Nice simple black. Just coming around to see if the, the red in the middle of the table goes to the bottom left-hand corner. If it does, he can just run this red into the centre. Oh, he needs to go, otherwise uh, he'll have to reroute. Yeah, it doesn't look like a go, so that... Actually, that's a poor shot from John. He needed an angle there to track down the table, so he, he might have to play 
the one on the bottom cushion as his next ball and maybe use that yellow that is directly above it as a buffer. He doesn't want to be near the cushion. He's okay as long as he's doesn't get snookered by if he's gonna get snookered by a ball it'll be um the one that's yeah that one there that he's pointing at. So I would over hit this because if he, as long as you hit it and you don't you're gonna have some kind of shot. Yeah, the natural angle, so if you were to catch this thin, you could just flick off the left-hand side of the yellow as we look at it, which would be bad. Yeah, just a little trace of side, inside. Ooh, yeah, he's picked a really good line there. Nice. Yeah, nice. Even if he bumps into that yellow, it's not a problem. Yeah. Pretty laid-back style John has. Uh, you know, he doesn't put a lot of pressure on his game, the way he plays. He just effort effortlessly... Strolls round the table. As ever, Aaron queuing way off to the left under, well, barely under his eye, to the to the left of his left eye. It's amazing in this cue action. I just, I mean, it just looks like a caricature. You're like you can't seriously be about to play like this, but it, he's such an accurate cue. Oh no, it's just, it's like nowhere near his chin. Well, fair play to him. He's still obviously. Plays at a high level. Yeah, it's one of those things you can't really change because it obviously works. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, if you can't, he'll have um, obviously something that he's obviously uh, had since he started playing. So no one's tried to coach you out of him. Let me too happy with the break though. At least from his perspective, he hasn't left the most straightforward starter, but. John should find a way here. Yeah, red punt. And he's going to try and maybe maybe play a ball. Either it cushion first off the yellow, but that yellow could go behind the other red on the, on the bottom cushion. As he plays it hard. Yeah, it's only on that bottom right-hand corner that's going to be the key thing. So it's yeah. like that ball at the top left, which... Does pop, but it's just a bit isolated from the rest. So it needs to find a route in and out of that area. Yeah, this this is the other shot I was looking at. It's whether he can kiss into the yellow and, and still have another shot. It doesn't it doesn't look like he he'll have an easy red after the nudge on the yellow, unless he plays it hard and need a little bit of luck then. Uh, yeah, because he's played it hard, it, it's kind of delayed the side that he's put on. Yeah, they are very responsive, these cloths, but any fast tournament cloth like this, you do get a bit of a delayed reaction if you play with too much spin. It yeah. takes a while to take effect. That's what happened there. He's, but he's got this shot now, cushion first. He's good at these shots too, as John normally. Yeah. His, his skill shots and playing balls off balls... He's one of the best at it. I think that that could be uh, the Blackpool side of his game that's coming through there. He's a, he was always probably the best skill shot player in the game, I think. Yeah, he's played that well as well. He's left a nice angle on the ball to the top left. Yeah, he just needs to make sure he, he gets the cue ball past the middle of the table so he needs to find that gap the uh, cue ball is in now and if he finds that gap and obviously it's it it's it hard enough it should should be okay stunning out yeah perfect he's played that lovely yeah this whole clearance has been good mm. just the missed cannon but luckily for him landed in a place where he can immediately play a different shot to do the same thing yeah Got into that a bit more. Yeah, he did. Yeah, left it a little bit awkward. He left himself a little bit of a tester. If that yellow's not there. This is a formality, but it's never great queuing over a ball. He's yeah. Got a bit of distance at least. He can get the queue through. Yeah, he's okay because yeah, he's such a straight queuist. Well, this has all been one-way traffic so far. I haven't really seen much from Aaron Davis. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the two knights that have the most 
number of people in watching, so it makes sense to to have the finals on those two nights. Just looking back at the break there. He popped the cue ball there a little bit instead of still fairly good contact. Uh, pretty decent split, it's just where the cue ball's finished. He'd, he'd love to see a red. I, don't, I think that just about cuts. It's whether it should be okay with the enough. I don't think it's enough. I was hitting the red anyway. Oh, that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, that's turned out pretty nice. Hasn't yeah, it? That, that's like <laughs> frame, frame winning shot. That's when you know that things are going your way when that kind of stuff's happening. I mean, that that red's not gone in the best of places, but because it's free, it can. John should be able to work his way around and either land behind it into the left middle or maybe give it another nudge, maybe move the yellow even after this shot, or even play on it now. But I think he'll, he'll, he'll definitely take, take this position after the, uh, after the break that he had. Yeah, for sure. And it's exactly as you say. Like when you're playing well, you seem to get these nudges. Yeah, he had no. no uh, he didn't have a clue about, you know, the red and the black going free off his first shot. He was just hoping to put the red, and then see how the balls lay and work your way from there. But yeah, when things are going your way, this this is the result. Yeah, it's the best feeling in the world when you're out in the this arena, you've got a big crowd and it's all going well. Yeah, you sense it, don't you? Like he, after that first shot you'll be thinking, right, you know, I'm three nil up, nice little nudge there, things are happening. And you know, he'll 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 be making sure he, he completes this visit just to make sure that little bit of luck that he had after the first shot, you know, he brings it home and yeah, four nil lead. The way he's breaking is, like I said, it's hard to break his serve. The way he's breaking, so four 0 is going to be a tough, tough old um, deficit to come back from for Aaron. Yeah, that's perfect. Now he's just going to make sure, just roll the red through three or four inches. Straight is fine. He can just stop the cue ball where the red is and. Leave a fairly easyish black. Again, just sauntering around the table looks so casual. But yeah, he's, he's got the choice here. Whether if he w if he's straight, he can actually run through. But I wouldn't even risk that. You know, you fancy potting the black, just stopping the cable where the red is. So don't play any unnecessary risky shots. You know, you might get a kick rolling it through, and it could land in no man's land. Just stop it dead. But no, he took the risk. Fair enough. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he actually had quite a natural shot, didn't he? So yeah. No problem at all. Wow, the one-way traffic continues right now. That's what um, uh, That's what I told Sheppy. So he, he likes a little punt. So I don't know if he, if he would have put any money. Oh, my God. Oh, that's unlucky, isn't it? That's savage. Oh dear! Okay. You can, uh, that's 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 the right reaction from Aaron. You can, what, what else can you do? Just have a little chuckle. Like you, you, you just know when it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be. I mean that white is dead safe, and then just a mm. ball comes out of nowhere and smashes no, no. it in. This is, yeah, yeah. I, you know, if John gets through this match, I'm actually from what I've seen. Obviously, when he played me and. What I've seen so far in this match, just the little things I can sense that are going for him. I'm gonna predict him to go all the way. So I'm gonna. Uh, there's my prediction for the whole thing. We'll have to find uh, find out later. Yeah, you won't have too long to wait. We're gonna be straight into the next semi-final after this. Cormac Kerr against Phil Harrison, and then final to follow. Oh, Phil Harrison's in the semis. I keep thinking he's already in the final. I've, lo I've, I've lost my bearings. This is the first semi. Go, go oh. do the business still in this one. Right. Sorry. Sorry, Cormac. I, I didn't realise. Uh, I thought Phil Harris in the match is won against Phil Parkin. That was his semi-final. Yeah. I just uh, just remember that was a quarter-final. That's not such a good prediction. 
Yeah. If you already know one of the finalists, you've got, you've got to go from a bit further out. Oh no, I'm a bit, I'm uh, I'm not quite sure now. Now that Phil's in the semis now, I feel like John four nil lead, and if he mops these up five nil, you know that that that's that is looking fairly nice. Um, but Phil Harrison, he'll start off as favourite against Cormac because uh, young Cormac. It's his first semi-final. Uh, Phil's the legend of the game, so Phil will start off uh, as the favourite, rightly. Uh, that's not to say Cormac can't, you know, cause an upset. He's had some big results on, on the way to the semi-final himself, so he'll be feeling good. Yeah, it's been a great weekend for him so far. You'd say oh. of, the, of the players we've seen most of this weekend, John McAllister and Phil Harrison probably have been playing the best, as is borne out by their results. Yeah, he's got a lovely shot here. He's going to just—he's got a natural angle to leave the cue ball exactly where the yellow is, and then he can play on the one on the cushion. Just yeah, this is all but done, I think. As long as he uh, doesn't leave himself awkward on the one on the cushion, you know, maybe bridging over the black or something like that. But I think he'll, he'll leave himself plumb. He's just playing too good to. Yeah, that's fine. Just screw it back to uh, just above where the cue ball is now. Yeah, that's pretty ideal, isn't it? He just wanted a little bit of angle to get the cue ball away from the cushion. Yeah. Could have had an inch or more angle, but that's that's pretty good. Got a fairly routine shot now. Yeah, looking like fine mill, and poor Aaron's not really had much of a go in this match. Um, he, had a, he had the first chance of the match. Um, didn't quite get the cannon that he wanted and from being a passenger after that. Yeah, it was incredible the way uh, the way some of those matches played out as well, all those top seeds going and several of them were in positions where they looked to have it all covered and then some, something happened that you weren't expecting. Mm. Oh, call the police, that's the first dry break I've seen from John. Uh, obviously I'm talking about the, my match, he never had one dry break and then all his breaks against Aaron so far have been his potted ball, so this is a really good layout for Aaron um, to get one frame on the board. Yeah, and this is what he needs to do. Going 6 0 behind would be a real disaster. 5 0 still pretty tough, but you've got to start the comeback somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, it'll be easy for him to mount a comeback, knowing that he's not really done much wrong. So, you know, when you're 5-0 down and you've missed two or three chances, it's a lot harder to come back um, when you're in that kind of situation. But because it's been more down to John playing the way he has to build this 5-0 lead, Aaron will still be feeling good about his game. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll look, look back at his previous results, the way he's played to get to the semi um, yeah, so uh, uh, it just all depends on whether he gets the chances. You know, it's the first chance he's had on John's break. You know, it's not the way he's breaking. It's not easy for that to happen. He's quite a level-headed guy as well. He doesn't feel like somebody that's going to get too distressed by being a few frames behind. He's just going to play his own game. Yeah, again, he's um, obviously an experienced campaigner. Even though he's fairly young, he's been around for... A while. Uh, he wants to be playing on the. Uh, yeah, that's all right. He'll probably play on the uh, the m the yellow over the left middle as his last ball now. Doesn't want to be bumping into the black too much to push it towards the bottom cushion because that'll make it a little bit more tricky. But that's fine. Just make sure you go past the straight and have a little angle to roll the cable back down the table. Yeah, and looks like it's going to be 5 1. Yeah, and as you rightly say, it hasn't really done a lot wrong. It's when you've been in every frame and you've missed chance after chance, it's very hard to mount a comeback. But Right now, he's just got to take the view that John put five together. No reason he couldn't do the same given a chance. Yeah, exactly that. So, a big break coming up for Aaron. 
I think he needs to uh, keep John away from the hill till at least maybe three, four, I think. If John gets on the hill, you know, when it's like five one or five two, a little bit lucky there. Maybe, maybe it's starting to turn a little bit. Dry break from John, and then he's uh, a little bit fortunate that he's not scratched in the top pocket there. Uh, things could be uh, turning Aaron's way. But I don't know what the layout's like. First glance. He's obviously can see a yellow at the bottom of the table. I don't know if you can see this. Does the yellow that he's closest to, does it go past the middle? Uh, the yellow near the middle? I don't think it does, otherwise he would be playing it. He'd love to see a red. Because the red, red looks like the easy set of bowls. Oh, oh that's not a good nudge. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a bad shot. He, he shouldn't really have been anywhere near that. I don't, I don't know that. He, he's actually played played that with a bit of side. That's taken the cue ball into that yellow. Um, so this finish it was already difficult. Um, it's it's been made even more difficult now. I mean, do you do you what do you do? You look, play the safety, or do you go all in and play the cross double? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well, uh, there you go. <laughs> I don't blame him for doing it because he's so far behind. That's a positive shot, and he knew he knew the cue ball was tracking back up the table towards his yellows. Well, and if you look at the table, it wasn't like there was a guaranteed safety either. No. You may as well go for a positive shot. Yeah, no, that's good. Good, um, good match play that is from Aaron. Uh, I like that choice of shot. Could have landed a bit kinder, actually. He's still stretching. Can't really... Con can he control the cue ball for his next yellow? Needs to go. I think he's all right. Oh, maybe... Uh, he's going to have to roll this through, play the one <laughs> down the cushion and then screw all the way back up. Yeah. How do you like them, Aaron? Yeah, it's not a shot you love when you're 5-1 five, five, down, is it? Yeah. He's got no choice now. He's going to have to roll this through. I don't think the cue ball is going... It might even be enough, so he needs to like maybe play it pocket weight so he doesn't go enough. Oh, what's... Not sure what he's tried to do there. Yeah, he's not really left anything, has he? No, that's a, a strange shot well, that he's played. Look like, I mean, it's sort of though he's played for a double, but I'm not sure the yellow at the top of the table does double past the red. No, that was a yeah answers on a post. Obviously, we don't really. It's hard to see what kind of angle that he had on the yellow. I mean, to me, it looked like he could run through, but it looked like he was tracking towards the uh, middle pocket, the cue ball. So it was more about pace control. Can Could the cue ball pull up before the middle pocket? If it, if it did, then he, could, then he could screw the cue ball back, putting the one down the cushion. And so that would have been the pattern with those three yellows. Um, but, yeah, a bit, a bit, it's hard to see the angle that he would have had. One thing's for sure, John's not missing these. Yeah, it's kind of an easy evening's work if you're 5-1 up and you get gifted this kind of chance with ball in hand. Yeah, this, I mean, at this level, you, you don't see anyone miss these kind of finishes. And the way John's playing... You know, I'm not even afraid of putting the jinx on him. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, for fine words there as he <laughs> slips out of position. You can tell that I don't normally commentate. But no, yeah, this is uh, this has done this for him. The only thing he needs to be careful with is like if he doesn't leave himself the right angle to like you know drift the cue ball right behind the black because you know, the black is on the cushion, which is he's doing the right thing by clearing this red up, this is probably the worst red you could leave to get on the black and the, the two that are in the middle of the table they're already above the black so you kind of just it's a lot more easy to play position on the black off those two reds yeah perfect just run through a couple of inches and then screw the ball back 
right behind the black. Great feeling this when you can go onto mm. the hill with your opponent still so far back. You're under no pressure then to close out the match. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. Nice angle just to drift right behind the cue ball, uh, the black ball. Yeah, I couldn't have played that any better. Unmissable black now. Yeah, for a 6-1 lead, and I think that was the last hope for Aaron uh, in this match, that he kind of needed to uh, keep John away from the hill. So it feels like he's been playing within himself so far, John, in this match. I mean, he's played very well, but it hasn't been sort of chasing finishes. It's all just looked very controlled. Mm, look at that break again. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's a lovely layout as well. Yeah. Just the way it's controlled, and there's no risk with the cue ball going in off or anything, and the you know the pack explodes. Yeah, quite envious. Yeah, it's one of those breaks that a lot of mm. a lot of top pros would be very happy to have. Oh, definitely. I mean, we can all hit them hard, but it's the control element. You know, if you can hit them hard and have that control. Yeah, cause it's not just passing a ball, but it seems like he's always leaving the white in a nice place. He's always getting a good split. Exactly, yeah. Because he's not, you know, the, the cue ball's not coming back at an angle where it's like maybe even going towards the corner pocket. And then you know, how many times you see a cue ball tracking towards the corner pocket and it's not quite going in, but then another ball just bumps it into the... You'd say that's unlucky because it's been kicked in off, but it's tracking somewhere near the pocket and there's a, there's a chance of that happening. But with John, because he's controlling the cue ball right down the middle of the table, you know, it's, he's got to be... You need to be really unlucky to going off. A very unlucky kiss needs to happen. Just making absolutely sure. I mean, the fact he's got a 6-1 lead, he wants to get this match closed out as quickly as he can. However big your lead is, you just don't need to get involved in anything silly at the end of a match. Yeah, so he's just make just depending on the angle that he's got here, it looks like he's got a little bit too much angle here, so he's probably going to screw this off the side cushion behind the yellow that's over the middle and play on the one on the bottom cushion. Yeah, just like that. Just a little bit straight, but you can screw it back. It'll ideally, wants to be like straight in, then you can screw it back for the black. But even if, as long as he, it doesn't really matter which way he's got the angle. But if I had a choice, I'd I'd prefer to be low. Then I can just float in off the top cushion and still leave a fairly makeable black. But he'll be aiming for straight. And that, I uh, might have gone a bit too far there. That's probably the worst place he could have landed the cue ball. Yeah, he's not got enough angle. He can run round the angles, but he's just got a slightly off angle. Yeah, he's going to have to take his medicine and play a little. Might be able to nip it in. Don't want to be too doing too much with it, though. Oh, oh I controlled it well. Fine. Yeah, I was able to just nip it in. Yeah, he, he has potted it, like, off the jaw. A little bit risky at that pace, but... You know, he's controlled it well. Really good performance from John. Well done to him. Unlucky Aaron. He's had a good run.